So before moving on to the cell structure cell diagram, I'm going to have to talk about micrometry. <laughs> Not my favorite part of biology, but it's still pretty important. Surprising amount of questions, paper one, paper two. So here we go. There's field of view, which is what we can see from the uh, microscope, like what we see through. And the circle of light, because it's eliminated from the bottom, and then this is what we see. This is some kind of, I don't know, string organism. What's important is calculating the magnification. I don't know why there are so many questions where you have to calculate the scale, go backwards, or find out what, the, what size the real thing is. But there's object magnification and drawing magnification. So drawing relates to when you're uh, when you're creating something, when you're um, doing sketches, for example, and you need a scale bar or some kind of magnification number, uh, some kind of coefficient that tells you how much bigger, how much smaller the real object is compared to your drawing or what your drawing is in relation to the object. Object magnification, we'll go into right now. Um, this is to do with the microscope's usage. So you have to multiply the ocular power and the objective lens power. This, I don't think they really test on this. This is more, more for lab work. Drawing magnification, this is the important ratio. Drawing size over actual size. This ratio is when uh, is how you figure out your magnification and how you might draw a scale bar, for example. So what's important here is the units because when you have a drawing size, for example, usually it's gonna be centimeters, uh, maybe millimeters. But centimeters, let's say you have a five centimeter drawing, but the real thing is, I don't know, like 25 millimeters. Then you would reduce the ratio but then you would still have to keep the units in that it's this many centimeters gives you this many um, units of millimeters. So the diameter of the, uh, the diameter of the lens is the diameter of field. And you can use this to figure out, uh, I mean, you can place a ruler underneath the um, lens to figure out how long it is. And you can see this is a lot of estimation, a lot of guesswork. To figure out how many uh, what the actual size of it is depending on your diameter of view so here would be a fourth of the diameter of view then your lab drawing you would measure from the longest dimension or if it's something um i don't know if you have some kind of like square object you should do a length and a width for the um, scale to make sure you're getting it right but now you need to do unit conversions to uh, keep this ratio you'll have 150 x what this means is that your your scale, your drawing is 150 times bigger. So one milli one millimeter is a thousand micrometers, and one centimeter is 10 millimeters. You can also remember the um, SI units. Um, you start from meters, and megameter is 10 to the six, so micrometer is 10 to the negative six. Millimeters is one one thousandth, centi is one tenth, and that's how we have to go from there. Nano is 10 to the minus nine, I believe. But basically, you need to do unit conversions, and your calculator will give you a number. What that number is, is this many per one of this. So you have this many centimeters, um, no, sorry, this many micrometers for this many um, centimeters is what they're saying. And you'd have a little bar that tells you. So onto the actual stuff. Cell diagrams. This is an animal cell. <clears throat> All the parts are labeled here. You're going to have to be able to recognize the electron micrograph. Some of the harder ones to see are the uh, rough ER and the Golgi apparatus look really similar. As well as um, vacuoles. They, they, just, they all look like black and white blobs. It's really annoying. A plant cell, much easier to recognize because you have one massive large central vacuole. It's chlor chloroplast surrounding it. And mitochondria. Um, remember that prokaryotes do not have mitochondria. That's pretty important distinction. But yeah, there's also no centrioles here compared to here. And there is still a defined nuclear, uh, nucleus, though. So cell theory, bunch of questions about this. There are three parts to cell theory. All organisms are composed of one or more cells. Think about humans. Cells are the basic units of structure and function of living organisms. So anywhere from bacteria to humans, they're all composed of cells. That's what this means. And all cells must come from other cells. So cells reproduce. So this means your cell can't um, spontaneously come from nothing. So you have to probably compare and contrast prokaryotes. That's a quite common question to show up. So prokaryotes have the nucleus, as mentioned earlier, and they have organelles. What with organelles means is that there are defined organelles, that they are membrane-bound, such as here they're entrapped within a membrane. 
But in um, prokaryotes, they're actually free floating in the cytoplasm. There is no nucleus in prokaryotes instead, and there's no organelles. So this means they just have a nucleoid region with plasmids or um, DNA strands just floating. We have the phospholipid cell membrane in eukaryotes, meaning the, um, the uh, fluid mosaic model that we'll cover in the next video. But prokaryotes have the peptidoglycan cell membrane. And generally, eukaryotes are much more complex if you think about animal and plant cells, whereas prokaryotes are much simpler. Bacteria, they're just unicellular. Then some similarities. Both have DNA, RNA. Both can evolve. Both have cell membranes, cytoplasm, ribosomes, any common um, things. Um, it's also note, uh, good to note the cilia, the flagella, and the pili. Pili and flagella are, usually, are um, prokaryotic. They're found in bacteria. Pili are the, um, they look like cilia, or cili, but they're the ones that can transfer DNA for um, that one reproduction that we'll cover soon. And within eukaryotes, there are animal cells and plant cells that you you might have to compare and contrast. So there is no cell wall for animals. There is a cell wall for plants. Many small vacuoles for animal cells and the large central vacuole mostly houses um, water and I think some nutrients. Animal cells, obviously no chloroplasts. We can't photosynthesize. Plant cells, they do have chloroplasts. Both are eukaryotes, both mitochondria, both of G uh, DNA, RNA, etc. This is a micrograph of E. coli. It shows the uh, peptidoglycan cell wall. So prokaryotes do have the cell wall. It's called the capsule, I believe, for um, prokaryotes and bacteria. They have pili, which look like the um, cilia used for um, locomotion in um, animal cells, except they can transfer DNA. And we have the flagellum, which are long strand-like uh, things used to for locomotion. So eukaryotic cells, this is what I mean. You c it's pretty hard to tell what this is. It says it's a liver cell. And you can see all these layers of fat are kind of indicators for what this is. I think this is the, a photo of the smooth ER. Or, well, they actually labeled it here, but... Um, sorry, this is the rough ER. This is the nucleus. You can see that our depiction of the rough ER, it's very tightly attached, but um, in reality, it could be a little uh, more loose floating. All these bubbles are vacuoles um, for transport in and out of the cell, things towards outside. There's a mitochondria here, and you can you can kind of tell there's um, a bit of the criste and matrix folding for surface area. Golgi apparatus, it should have pinching offs. These are pinching offs for the um, vesicles, transport, plasma membrane, and the free, the little dots are all ribosomes in the um, cytoplasm. So the matrix is the space in between and the cristae are the folds. Um, I don't know how you remember this. Maybe you remember that matrix is a, um, a place like the movie. So that's how you'll remember that. Okay, the granum stroma, this is within a chloroplast. The stroma are the spaces in between granum. And each granum has a, is a stack of thylakoids, I believe like little coin structures. I think they're in a different set of notes. This is a, another compare and contrast. And this is important, the nine plus zero and the nine plus two microtubule pattern. So this is the example of a sperm cell. These are uh, basal bodies from centrioles. So the basal body has nine plus zero. So there are triplets in a set of nine. So both are in sets of nine. The difference is that nine plus two means that they have one open set. So it's one, two, and one open set, kind of looking like an ant. And there's two in the middle, kind of like a straw. These are flexible and allow for mobility, like a sperm cell flapping around. And these are more rigid due to their triplet structure and they're used for anchoring. So they, this one would hold down and then this part would be allowed to move while this is stable. Um, it's also important to note, I think nine plus zero is used in spindle fiber formation during mitosis. So here's the in-depth definitions of all of these. I'm gonna go through all of them now. So an organelle is a tiny cell structure with a spe specific function. So they are responsible for emergent properties. If you think about a human, we respire, we breathe in, but what we're doing that is for 
uh, for our cells to respire. Our cells need to respire, and that's why humans, in the grander scheme, we all breathe in and out. It's to supply oxygen to our cells, and that's because of our organelles requiring oxygen for energy and things. So the nucleus is kind of like the brain of the cell, in plural, it's nuclei. It controls the cell, and it contains all your genetic information in the form of chromosomes. And chromosomes are important because they code for proteins, the most vital point. Um, surrounded by a double layer membrane called the nuclear envelope. You might remember this dissolves during one stage of mitosis. Um, and there are pores to allow for um, transport and export. I think only messenger RNA is big enough to fit, is uh, small enough to fit through these pores. Transcription and replication occur here. The nucleolus is within the nucleus and produce, produces rRNA, ribosomal RNA, for ribosomes. I think rRNA is the one um, introns and ex before introns and exons are removed. That might be um, pre-RNA. Um, maybe, maybe look it up for yourself. I'm not too sure. Ribosomes are involved in protein synthesis and make polypeptides, which are just proteins. They're found either on the surface of the rough ER or they're in small groups called polysomes. They're not on the smooth ER. Uh, polysomes are able to process multiple mRNA uh, sequences at once, and they're used, the ones in the cytoplasm are used inside the cell, whereas the ones in the endoplasmic reticulum are for export. The ER, the rough one, um, tubular channels, nuclear envelope, and they're like an assembly line, like a little factory for proteins, and they get sent out. So you can imagine, I don't know, this one's like Taobao and smooth, no ribosomes. And this one's associated with fat and steroid production and detoxification. So you see a lot of them in liver cells. Testosterone, progesterone, estrogen for steroid production. And alcohol and toxins are broken down into carbohydrates, which explains why you get so fat if you drink. And here, vesicles are small vacuoles that are used for transport. They're made from pinching offs of the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi body, uh, Golgi being a name, so you have to capitalize it, or the Golgi apparatus, Golgi complex, they're all the same. Looks like pancakes uh, from that photo from earlier. Let's go see. Looks here, like these ones. And materials are uh, stored, processed, and repackaged. So it sends things out. Lysosomes, or suicide bags, they're used to digest things. So it combines with a food vacuole, they merge, and then their enzymes within will digest the parts and then you will, you know, they'll be free floating in your cell for use. Vacuoles are just sacs. They're little like bubbles used to hold things. In the plant cell, they're the large central vacuole for water because it allows for rigidity of the cell. If you think about it, like a tree, a plant, they don't wade in water. They don't, um, bend very easily. Mitochondria, or mitochondrion, singular, is the powerhouse of the cell. It's using, uh, it supplies energy to cell processes through the synthesis of ATP. In uh, eukaryotes, it'll be 38 ATP in, um, and photosynthesis, it'll be 2 ATP. Or no, wait, no. That's, uh, sorry. Photosynthesis does not create ATP. That's for, um, animals. It's uh, aerobic versus anaerobic. Anaerobic, I think it's 2 ATP. So aerobic with oxygen is much, much more um, efficient to, for producing ATP. Active cells contain more mitochondria. If you think about your uh, the ones that have to move a lot, do a lot, your heart, brain, and muscles. And they have two cell membranes, which is important for something called the endosymbiotic theory, which suggests that mitochondria have their own DNA and they have a double membrane. Maybe uh, eukaryotes actually absorbed mitochondria they like took them in and then started using them for atp and that's why they still have a double membrane and they have dna within and that's a important point that i would like you to know they're extremely folded for efficiency and um, surface area the cristae and the fluid matrix has enzymes that allow the it to do its magic microfilaments are thin solid fibers of protein either actin or myosin and they prov provide the skeletal framework of the cell. They're the cytoskeleton. Microtubulates, uh, microtubules, are larger than microfilaments. They're cylinder shaped of um, cold protein, like tubulin. They're for the cilia, flagella, and centrioles. Um, they'd probably be used for pili as well. 
cilia and flagella, uh, as mentioned earlier, they're in cilia are usually in um eukaryotes and flagella. You'd probably only see in um prokaryotes. I'm not too sure. They're used for movement, cell locomotion, and they have the nine plus two arrangement of microtubules. And the base, where it's closest to the cell, would have the 9 plus 0 basal body. Centrioles create spindle apparatus in cell division, and yes, they do have the 9 plus 0 microtubule pattern. So there's two on each, either side, like the pole, when they, if you think about anaphase, where they have to be pulled away from the middle to the sides, uh, what's making those spindle fibers is centrioles. And cytoplasm, the gel-like substance, it's, I think it's mostly water within the cell, it helps hold the organelles, like it suspends them and maintains cell shape. The cell membrane, um, we'll go more into depth about this fluid mosaic model, but there are four kinds of things in there. There's cholesterol, phospholipid, proteins, there's both integral and the um, external ones, and there are carbohydrate markers. They're semi-permeable, meaning that only certain things can come in. Plastids are only found in plant cells. There are chromoplasts, leucoplasts, and chloroplasts. Chromoplasts, uh, chromo like color, contain pigments for orange and yellow. Leucoplasts, uh, stuff in like in a potato, are for starch, starch storage. And chloroplasts are the most common, and they have chlorophyll, which is the green pigment. But more importantly, it's for photosynthesis. It converts water, carbon dioxide into glucose and oxygen for us. The coin-like stacks are the grana, and individual coins are thylakoids. Space in between are called stroma. And the cell wall in plant cells only is made of cellulose, which is a three-layered structure surrounding the cell membrane. And this is actually um, a pretty important point because I've seen questions about it. There's primary cell wall, middle lamella, and secondary cell wall. It's rigid but porous, difficult to digest. Some animals that might be able to are like rabbits, cows who eat grass. Um, yeah, and that's it for the notes up here. It looks like there's some more down here. These are uh, just some review. Yep, yeah. okay.